Unless you're one of those lucky people who actually enjoy getting up in the morning, you probably need a little coaxing to come out from under the covers. And sometimes a chuckle is just what it takes to make the reality of a new day a little more bearable. Doc Harris specializes in lightening up the morning. For over eight years, he and his cast of thousands have been teasing listeners awake on radio station LG73. But last fall, just before he ran off to get married, Doc Harris was in our kitchen to demonstrate his other specialty. Good morning, it's Doc Harris on your TV. And this morning, we're going to explore two occult mysteries. First mystery, how to prepare artichokes with hollandaise sauce. Second mystery, how do you get the stains out of your jacket if you own one of these birds? <laughs> well, okay, no. there we are. Good morning to you. Good morning to it's you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. We're, we're... What we're going to do this morning is make artichokes with hollandaise sauce. And I should, uh, first of all, indicate this is an artichoke. An artichoke. A lot of people think these are a vegetable, but actually they're a uh, relative of the badger family and they come <laughs> along the ground. Yeah. If, you want to, uh, if you want to catch one, you have to be fairly quick on your feet. At any rate, we have <laughs> captured a few. We've ca I captured four yesterday, okay. <laughs> but then I'm fairly quick right. on my feet. I'm still holding two eggs in one hand, <laughs> which is not that big a trick, really. First thing you'd want to do if you got an artichoke is to trim it, uh, because it has all these, I'll show you the one that's untrimmed, has all these nasty spikes on it. Let me get rid yeah, of these I, eggs. I noticed. Yes, you can really uh, sting yourself badly with one of these. They're pretty sharp, and uh, so what you'd want to do is, when you get your artichokes home from the store, uh, take your scissors and snip off all the nasty ends. This looks like a lot of work, um, <laughs> and it is. And if you're in a hurry, and the family is just begging for an artichoke and can't wait, it's a very simple matter to just take the artichoke, take a big knife, and just whack the end off like that. And that takes care of all of those oh. spines, except for on the outside. A lot of people do that when they want to get it done quickly. Now, uh, to prepare your artichokes, what you do is after you've got them cut up, take a little olive oil, pour it in the artichoke, shake on a little salt. After cutting the stem off, place it in a steamer. You don't need one this big. Well, you cut the stem right off. That's right. You just take your knife there and cut the bottom off. Okay. For no other reason than it'll sit flat in the steamer and won't fall over. That's some steamer, isn't it? That's a monster. Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> looks, part, looks like part of the boiler room. At any rate, okay. It's like R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> <right, yeah. laughs> um, having trimmed your artichoke, you can put it in the steamer and get a good head of steam going there. Let it go for about 45 minutes. Now, you need something to serve it with. The easy way out is to melt some butter because you can dip the artichoke leaves in the mm -hmm. butter. The hard way is to make hollandaise sauce. It sure is hard. And now we come to the tricky part of this morning's thing, because I don't own a stove like this. <laughs> no one, one thing, does. If I had a kitchen like this, I would get the taps turned around. The right way. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, you have to separate two eggs. Okay. I suggest putting one in the bedroom and one in the carport. <laughs> uh, and get the yolks. You need two yolks of eggs. There's one yolk. I ruined the hollandaise last night. You so did? I'm, oh, I'm well, I'm hoping you enjoyed it watching this today. Yeah, okay, and uh, here's separating the other egg. This is awful. Okay. <laughs> you buy nice egg separators. I have one. I didn't bring it. This is my own pot, though. But, it is. Uh, yes, it is. Oh, I thought it was kind of okay. nice. Okay. Having gotten the two yolks of eggs and Here, a paper towel to clean yourself, I got most of the same. Uh, no, it's not. Paper towel to clean yourself up with. You then take, and I'm going to guess on this one because we don't have any measuring spoons. You take three tablespoons of butter, or what looks like three tablespoons yeah. of butter. There are probably many good home economists right now sitting out there saying, that's not three tablespoons. He's in big trouble now. Probably not either. That's not at all. Let me. Okay. I think you're going to need more need than that. Need more than that? Yes. Oh, gee, that's going to be. That is more like one and a you half. Think so? Yeah. Okay, just a thin slice then. I never use a measuring spoon. Maybe this is why your hollandaise goes wrong. I'll take, I'm in I'll this take half of that. every week. Are you? Oh, not making hollandaise, though. No. This is a little stiff, this butter. But uh, it's a good idea to sort of stir the two together. Make sure your butter is somewhat softer than this when you start. But. Uh, Actually, we'll be okay once we... Once it starts to melt, it'll Yeah, once fine. it starts to melt. So you're supposed to mix them together before yeah. you put them on? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. We'll Maybe probably find out why it's on. a good idea in a minute. <laughs> right. But I'll try to break this up as much as I can. Pass as time allows here. Were you always funny, even when you were in David Lloyd George Elementary School? Uh, just a little weird. Yeah, I guess so. I started a school newspaper called the Purple Pelican. <laughs> They'd ask, why is it called the Purple Pelican, then? Why is it called the Purple Pelican? Because it isn't called anything else. <laughs> okay. 
before, before everybody falls asleep. I hope this works because this butter, I should have uh, set this on top of the radiator or something. But Looking fine. It's getting it's fairly smushed in there. Don't okay, know. so you okay, mix so your much egg for yolks and your That's butter. Right. And then you put in approximately, oh, just a little bit of salt. <laughs> You've already salted the artichokes when you put on the uh, olive oil. Mm -hmm. And just a get dash of cayenne pepper, which is sometimes oh. harder and sometimes easier to get out of the thing. Okay, <laughs> now, adding a quarter cup of, uh, or make that an eighth of a cup of boiling water here, which I'm once again eyeballing. This is great. Oh, it's a double boiler. That's, That's right. Important. Use a double boiler. That is important. Don't use direct heat because the stuff will curdle quicker than you can. That's what happened to my last night. It curdled. It curdled. Well, I'll be coming up with a tip in a minute. Oh, as good. To how to prevent that curdling or what to do if it does. Why? No solution, though, for hard butter. Well, what, this must have been bought at a restaurant, you know, where they serve really soft bread. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's where it seems to live. Okay. Now. <laughs> oh, good. Can I ask you yeah, a question now? Go ahead, sure. Oh, good. What was I going to ask you? Oh, yes. Will you what, you... what time is your show start in the morning? Six o'clock. What time do you have to get up in the morning? I get up around 4.30 because I go in and prepare the show ahead of time, starting at about 5 o'clock. My goodness. Have you ever slept in? Oh, yeah. Showing up as late as quarter to six. Have you really? The thing about going in an hour ahead of time for work is nobody notices if you're late by your standards, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm still there at six o'clock. <laughs> it's just I have nothing to say. Okay, stirring briskly here. It's good exercise for the arm. Nothing else. Not much happening there, but you can see it lifts. At last, the butter has melted. That's right. Now... So you really have to do it briskly. Well, not really, but it makes a nice noise, and it makes me look busy while I'm here on television. <laughs> Ordinarily, I'd be over at the kitchen table reading a magazine. I understand that you spent some time in trail. Yes, I did. Five big months in trail. Became a tremendously large celebrity there. And how was it? Got a free ticket to the hockey game once a week. Oh, it was fine. It's a nice city. It really is. It was sort of a stop along the way because they weren't paying much money and I'm fond of eating and having clothes. Actually, so. you're lucky you said it was nice. I'm from Trail. Oh, that's nice. Hey, yes, you must have listened to old right. CJAT <laughs> from time to time. Were you oh, back yes, there in 69? Yeah, remember my course. big five months career? I do. Remember how I drove people crazy with that stupid bicycle horn? <laughs> I had this fetish for going around beeping this bicycle horn on the radio. And it wasn't until I listened to tapes of it months later that I realized how irritating it was. Why don't you show us some of your characters? Well, show us, I mean, why don't well, you... Well, I can't, because they actually live at the radio studio, you see. They don't appear live. That's the thing, that's the truth. Oh, no. <laughs> why don't you tell us about some of your characters? Well, we've got Grandpa Miller, who is a longtime resident of Dunbar, and has many hobbies, uh, has been involved in such projects as uh, putting a rocket in orbit around the Earth at a height of 50 feet and uh, got as far as the back window of the neighbor's house when he launched it, but it was in orbit. <laughs> this is uh, starting to thicken now. Is no notice this? Well, okay, it's not thickening that quickly. <laughs> yeah, but it's doing all right. Aren't there some goats, too, that come around? We did have them? the radio goats. We had to dismiss the radio goats, but we did have the uh, radio goats. It was a magic moment as uh, classical music and livestock blended as one when the <laughs> Dr. Harris radio goats would climb up on your breakfast table and finish your breakfast for you. Oh, I see. It was uh, certainly one of the highlights of my day. It ruined a lot of really popular classical pieces. Oh, really? For a lot of people, yeah. I was told one time by a guy in a furniture store that he could no longer listen to his favorite piece of classical music without thinking of goats. <laughs> Which, what about the fog eaters? Well, the fog eaters have been with us for a long time. As you know, we have a lot of fog on the lower mainland. We keep the fog eaters in a pen. They're released during uh, foggy conditions and especially enjoy the dreaded pipe B fog, which can actually catch in the grill of your car. We don't have Hollandaise sauce. Look wow. at that. Nice and thick. You see? And it's just made out of eggs and water and butter. Where were you when I needed you? Oh, probably out in Richmond, minding my own business. Okay, we're going to take a short break. Okay. And it's a good time. The holiday's ready. That's right. Just and when squeeze we... in a little lemon. That's all you have to do now. Just when we come squeeze. back, we'll see the, oh. the uh, finished product of this holiday sauce. Right. And we'll get to even taste it. That's right. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. 